Hello, welcome to RDLP. I'm your host, the Prince of Play, Solon, and today I have a very special game for you that I have been meaning to play for a long time because it has been in my comments incessantly that we get to this. We've been playing a lot of Otome dating sims, a lot of the Otomate games, if you're familiar with their work. Um, amazing. Every single Otomate game has been just like... Uh, exciting and intense and different that it's, it's a huge variety of stories um that have spawned uh, that, that have spurned a lot of passion in me to continue playing these games um i don't think oz mafia is actually an odomare game i think it's a different group uh and i could be wrong but it's the same like the same things have been coming up in my comments it's like this is you gotta do this one this is the new one that just came out um, came out about three or four months ago, and I've been kind of like, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. Now it's like, it's happening. Oz Mafia. I have no insights into what could be beyond the portal. I'm assuming this is organized crime in the Wizard of Oz universe. By the name, that's all I can really assume. And, uh, but look at just all of our pretty boys that we're looking at today. Uh, I think what's got me the most excited more than any of these boys, and I talk about it every time we do one of the Otome uh, dating sims, is that our main character, uh, front and center, right down there, uh, she looks to be like a really important part of this story, and that's always my judge of whether an Otome game is very good or very not good. Uh, the whole reason we do this, why do we have the lead character be a female, is that because when the lead character is male and all the characters are female, the story doesn't necessarily get going the way that I want it to. It doesn't really uh, focus much on the plot and focuses more on the how can you get in that girl. Um, and so I've been enjoying our, our Otome dating sims and I'm ready to do it again. Oz Mafia. Let's begin. New game, baby. He's going to kill me. 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 <laughs> We seem to be having a uh, interesting rhetorical device being used here. This is what we would call in medias res. We're really in the thick of the action here, aren't we? He's going to kill me. 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 Can't escape the footsteps behind me. If he catches me, he's going to kill me. I don't want to die. 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 I want to die. I want to kill him. I don't. I don't want him to kill me. I don't want to die. I don't. I want to live. Okay, so we have a running, hopeful person. My heart and body are running on pure instinct. I want to live! Oh! <laughs> oh no! I, I, I don't know if that was necessarily a good thing. That didn't seem like a good ending to that story. Or maybe they just ran into someone or something. I think we're going to figure out who wants to live very soon, hopefully. There once was a girl named Dorothy. She lived on a farm. Perfect! We're in the Oz. Excellent. One day, a tornado hit, and she and her beloved dog Toto were whisked away to the magical land of Oz. So, this is a tale as old as time, but I think what has me really excited is that this is a Japanese take on a classic American tale that originated in film. There's not a lot like The Wizard of Oz. And because it's so distinctly American, um, as, as it is one of the very, like, one of the few stories that is completely originated in Americana, uh, that's cool. We're gonna see some cool stuff come of that, I'm hoping. And I think the Mafia adds to that, because what is more Americana than the Mafia? Dorothy made her way down the yellow brick road with a pair of magic silver slippers. At the end of the road, she found the Emerald City. There, she met the Wizard of Oz to ask him to send her home. This is not that story. This is going to be like that story. I'm glad they're filling us in on the uh, details here. She did not make the journey alone. She had friends with her. A scarecrow without a brain, a tin woodsman without a heart, and a lion 
without any courage. Together, they journeyed to obtain the things they lacked. I mean, structurally, it's like the perfect story. <laughs> it doesn't. St it's not sticking to any hard metaphors here. It's like very literal. I don't have a brain. I want a brain. I got a brain. We did it! High fives all around! Before their journey, their future had seemed immutable. But afterwards, they had proven that they could shape their future with their own desires. The American dream is real! From gray to the colors of the rainbow, from black and white to a technicolored splendor. With these fading fragments close at heart, I continue on my journey to you. Oh! So maybe this is what comes after. When everything turns to color, this is after Oz, huh? Ugh. Information slowly filled the girl's foggy mind. Cold, cold sand bit into her cheek and fingers. Her eyelashes quivered as she slowly opened her eyes. I don't think there's a single Otome game that we haven't started where it literally ends up. It, it, it starts with, the girl opens her eyes. <laughs> That's like every single one. Almost every route in it, well, every route literally in Amnesia Memories is, she opens her eyes, she has amnesia. <laughs> uh, where? Putting her hands to the ground, she sat up to look around. The color of the walls, the shape of the pebbles blanketing the ground, the smell of the sand hanging in the air. None of it was familiar to her. The only thing she knew for sure was that she'd woken up in a dark alley somewhere. Where am I? She stood up unsteadily but the higher vantage point failed to clarify the situation. Mm -mm. She could feel someone's gaze on her back and slowly turned around. <laughs> who's, who's there? Oh, hey! Well, that was fast. Silver-haired man says, who, Who's this dude? His silver hair swayed gently in the breeze. The eyes peeking out from beneath his hair were clearly fixated on the girl. The intensity of his gaze made her instinctively take a step back. I should, shouldn't should just ignore him. She gulped and forced herself to speak up. Um. Classic. What's our first words as our new main character, uh, Dorothy X? I, I don't actually know what her name is, but we're going to go with Dorothy X for now. The X Factor in The Wizard of Oz. Uh, well, first decision informs who our character is, what our character types are going to be like, and probably has absolutely no effect on the story. And we'll probably actually go through all of these, honestly. Hello, where are we? Who are you? Hello. Yo. No response. Guess he doesn't want to talk to strangers? Finally found you. Oh! Found me! Um, do you know me? You are my... my prey. Uh, oh, is that it? Uh, so I'm your prey? Prey? Prey. Oh, we're already... We're already deep in the uh, metaphorical love in our PG show. In our PG cartoon video game anime. <laughs> prey. Now allow me to destroy you. Hostility emanated from him as he pointed his large blade at her. His large blade at her. I, I have to get out of here. Driven by instinct, her body began to move by itself. The moment he raised his blade over his head, the girl turned on her heels. I'm out of there. I'm out of there. I'm not dealing with no weird scar kid, scar face kids and their swords. I don't know where I should go, but I know I have to get away from this guy. No, uh, no sudden latent judo abilities that could uh, disarm the dude and turn the sword around. That's okay. That's okay. Maybe next time. Where should I go? Excuse me, coming through. Gonna, gonna try to not die. I'm not gonna die. I'm not gonna die. She weaved through the crowd, her feet carrying her ever forward. There's nothing familiar to her about the busy street or the surprised pedestrians making way for her. Wait, my prey. Oh. That's, uh, uh, she's, she's bartering, or he's bartering with me. What an interesting term. Why would you barter with someone you are calling your prey? No! No, absolutely not! What should I do? What should I do? All she could think about was running. The rest would have to come later. If he catches me, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. I can't escape these footsteps behind me. If he catches me, 
He's going to kill me. All right, we're already back to square one. Good. I don't want to die. I don't want him to kill me. I don't want to die. I want to live. So this is currently, uh, this whole line of dialogue here, this is our entire characterization, which is kind of cool. We're, we're not a blank slate. We are surviving. We desire survival. And I think that's uh, kind of cute. That was the whole reason that they throw that at you right away, besides it being an interesting hook uh, on the reader. But they do it literally so that when you see the main character, you know they have a desire to live. And that's important to them. My heart and body are running on pure instinct. I want to live. We're going to live. We're going to live. We're going to give you a name, at least. Yeep. Oh, no. Suddenly her foot caught on something, sending her flying towards the ground. I, I tripped? The girl closed her eyes as she felt herself fall. Gravity just comes out from under you and you just take to the skies and then to the ground very shortly after. Whew. The impact and pain she'd been anticipating never came. Have I fallen into the arms of a man? Who's this guy? Timidly, she opened her eyes. A red-haired man was holding her. You're not injured, are you, senorita? Oh, oh no, thank you. Of course she's fine. You caught her yourself. Kyrie, there's so many other ways we could have stopped her without you needing to trip her, you know. Fair point. That said, I had faith that you could handle it, Karamia. Hey, now. Um, thank you very much for saving me. Your names were... Uh... Karamia, my ill-natured friend here is Kyrie. Mr. Karamia and Mr. Kyrie. Oh, it sounded as though this is the first you've heard of us. Hmm? I'm the one who should be confused here. No one in this city, especially not in this particular district, doesn't know who we are. Good point. Where are you from? See... I've caught you! Ugh. It's the guy! He wants to poke me with his long sword! <laughs> he calls me his prey! Did you think you could run away from me? I'm going to gobble you up! Oh, I'm so sorry! I completely forgot about you! Our favorite heretic from the outlying forest. Heretic! I scream with a questioning intonation because I need to reiterate everything that people say to me. Hey, wait a minute. You don't even know who is chasing you. He's part of the wolf something or other group who inhabit the forest outside of the city. He's there, uh... Trailing off and scratching his cheek with a finger, he turned towards Kyrie. His name is Caesar, head of the wolf gang. Oh, well, wolf gang. They fight with hockey pucks. We call them the Wolfgang Pucks. Yeah, that's it. That was his name. Mr. Caesar. Even when she spoke his name aloud, it didn't ring any bells. I'll destroy you! Quite the troublemaker, isn't he? Well, I guess he's always like this, Kyrie. I'll let you take care of the signorina. Mr. Karamia! That instant, Kyrie firmly grasped her outstretched hand. Okay, I like where we're going here. Please stay close to me, or are you spoiling for a fight? Sorry, but quite frankly, I'm not interested in such troublesome affairs. But... Oh, don't worry. We normally settle things peacefully. Normally? Oh, okay. Lowering his stance, Caesar charged toward forward at Karamia. He took aim at Karamia and swiftly swung his sword at him. Karamia took a half step back to dodge and then promptly closed the distance between them. Before Caesar could react, Karamia had drawn his pistol from his holster and pressed its muzzle to Caesar's forehead. We're like straight in that Romeo and Juliet like battle drama stuff. <laughs> 